Hey everyone, uh, this is going to be uh, as a video on uh, our stocks dashboard and we are going to talk about a couple of things such as technical analysis, price action analysis and uh, other things very similar to that. So let's uh, dive right into it. Uh, so what I have in front of me is Apple's uh, stocks dashboard and on the top uh, you can see some uh, fundamental stats about the company. Obviously Apple is a great company. Uh, one thing that uh, most people don't know about is on this uh, these three icons that you are seeing you can use these to uh, go to different dashboards so if you want to look at apple's options dashboard then you can simply click on this if you want to go to the tradex ai dashboard then you can click on this and if you just want to like uh, see this video guide or watch this video guide uh, then you can click on this video guide this is the price of apple and this is how much it moved uh, the first thing that we have here, which is the main thing in our stocks dashboard, is our own uh, custom very small scale charting. So we are obviously not a charting platform, but we have done our best to uh, create a small in-house uh, in-house charting platform uh, for Creatix users in case they do not want to uh, go use other charting platforms. Uh, the data that you see in our charting is live, uh, but instead of updating every second, it updates uh, every 30 to 60 seconds. So there is a little bit of a delay in how live uh, how live it is, but it's still live data. So this is the default uh, chart that you're going to see, but I'm going to change a couple of things here just to uh, make it clean. Uh, so I don't like these moving averages too much. Uh, I mostly work with Anchored VWAP, which is this yellow line here. So what I'm going to do is uh, change the period to a very high value. And what does that do? That simply removes this. So it's just a like small hack. Uh, that's pretty cool. So now that the moving averages are gone, if you do want these moving averages, just keep them on. You can change them to 200, 100, 9, all kinds of moving averages. But I simply want to look at these candlesticks with an anchored VWAP. Uh, so let's uh, actually start uh, to go through each of these options we have because I believe they are really useful. So first thing on the left actually is you can change the chart type. Uh, you can change it to a line, uh, a candlestick or a bar. Let's go back to candlestick. You can add lines, you can draw fibs, not like this, you can, yeah, you can draw Fibonacci levels and you can do a wide range of stuff just with these uh, icons on the left. But what's really useful is what you see on the top. So f the, the first one is obviously the time frame, uh, which means like what time frame uh, do you want to look at? Let's look at probably five minute chart. If you click on that, you're going to uh, open up the five minute chart, but let's go back to the daily chart. The next one is a really uh, useful one and that's called support and resistance levels. And we have our own in-house uh, algorithm, which looks at the data in the chart that you're seeing and tries to find the best possible support and resistance levels. And that's what we use to draw levels. So let's actually go ahead and uh, look at some support and resistance levels for Apple. All right, so the green ones uh, are the support levels and the red ones uh, are the resistance levels. You can see that right now we are on a support level, which is which also looks very like uh, a resistance level as well. We, we we touched it here, we touched it here, then we touched it here a couple of times. And I think this is probably what's uh, making it a support and resistance level. And the other ones, so this one is obviously this is a really cool one because we touched that price level so many times and it was a level of interest. So you should use the support and resistance levels as levels of interest from where price can bounce up or down. And you can draw the support and resistance levels on any time frame. So let's uh, talk about uh, trend lines now. So these trend lines are again uh, algorithmic trend lines. These are generated by an algorithm, but they're not as precise as the support, as the support and resistance levels that we just saw. So I, I typically only use them uh, to gauge if there are any good solid trend lines out there in the in the price action. And so you can see this like this one, and this seems like a good trend line, uh, it, and it found support, and we found support on this trend line. Uh, these ones are obviously not that good. This is actually very similar to the support level that we got. Uh, so these are just useful to get some ideas. Then let's clear that as well. Then what we have are uh, really cool things called and dark pool levels, which are uh, price points where most of the dark pool transactions or where the biggest dark pool transactions have occurred in some historical time period. 
So let's look at the bi-weekly chart. And so the, these are um, more than the b basic support and resistance levels we have. These are really useful and valuable levels uh, as potential support and resistance levels as well. And, and anytime price uh, goes to these levels, it uh, either price falls on these or like goes up and reaches to these levels. Uh, these levels should always be of interest to you because they can act as very good support and resistance levels. And you can actually see like you can see this happening here as well. So there, there, there is about yeah, so more than one billion dollars sitting on the 166 level. And you can see we have been trying to break that level for a few days and we just have not been able to do that. So a billion dollars is sitting on a price point and definitely means something when price goes there. Let's assume those were sold positions because they are because they are dark pool orders. We are not fully sure, but like let's make an assumption because uh, let's assume when they came in, price started to go down. So having that assumption, there are a billion dollars uh, sitting on this level, and that level should be of high high interest to you because of just how much money is sitting on the, that that level. So the white ones are uh, real dark pool uh, levels, but then you also see these green and red ones. These are still dark pool levels, but they're based on block trades. And for block trades, we typically know what their direction was because we know whether they were uh, filled at ask or at bid because they are filled on exchange. Dark pool orders are always off exchange, so it's impossible to know their exact direction. But uh, I think on a, on, a, on a very basic level, uh, consider these levels as a uh, really good support and resistance levels and these obviously would work much better on smaller time frames since we were only looking at the last two weeks and so see so this was a nice resistance level then look at how beautiful this level is so we touched it here 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 and then we just went up now look at how beautiful that one billion uh, dollar level has been like uh, working out as so you can see uh, we found resistance here we went up just for a minute and then we went down uh, not just for a minute like for 30 minutes but then we went, went down again so these levels are really accurate support and resistance levels let's go back to the daily chart uh, the next thing i want to discuss is the event avweb and so avweb means anchored uh, vweb uh, most people are familiar with vweb but they only use the vweb from the start of the day till the end of the day that's not the only VWAP you can use. That's an anchored VWAP that you're anchoring from the start of the day. But you can anchor VWAP from other places as well, such as year to date, week to date, month to date, some gap up, some gap down. And VWAP from those levels or from those anchors can also act as a really good support or resistance. And so if you just click on this, this is going to draw a couple of different VWAPs based on different anchors. If you just ho hover over the line, you'll actually see what what are these colors we have uh, year to date vweb we have we have resistance we have support so there are a couple of vwebs which we consider as very important uh, vwebs that we are going to draw for you in an automated way if you just click on this button <laughs> all right so this obviously uh, just being like more precise you can see that like this a blue one is the month to date VWAP and anytime uh, we break below it we, we regained our position right away but after that we have been finding support on this level so these uh, VWAP levels both short term and long term uh, it happens uh, quite often that we find support and resistance on these levels so really useful then we have what we call these projections that look at how has the price moved historically and they just project those same statistics onto the next 30 days so it just gives you an idea uh, on how the price might move but this is not a prediction just a projection based on how historically things have moved then if you want to invert the chart like if you want to look at it upside down just click on this button and you'll be able to invert it and then obviously have we have some uh, technical indicators and things like that and you can play around with them let's use the williams r i'll change here if you want to use bollinger bands you can use bollinger band and you can do uh, a bunch of other stuff but again uh, it's a very simple uh, lightweight charting uh, platform that we have developed or at least charting 
not charting platform it's a very simple charting dashboard that we have developed for you uh, and we hope it will be uh, useful for uh, everyone if they're not using a solid uh, charting platform such as trading view or others then uh, we have two uh, really cool tools called price comparison and price pairs I'll, uh, so the price comparison is obviously uh, very easy to see what it's doing it's simply looking at the price between the stock that you are analyzing versus s p which is spy and it just gives you an idea on whether some whether a stock is let's assume beating the overall market or not and so we can see uh, and, but but this doesn't give you it, it gives you a visual look but what we really want is the ratio of the stock that we are trying to analyze versus the market which would be spy qqq or iwm and that's what the price pairs chart shows you and so this shows you a ratio of let's say apple uh, versus uh, s p and the ratio is based on the change in price every day and when this line is going up that means that stock has high relative strength and that stock overall has been beating the market and s p and qqq has been going down for some time now but apple has stayed relatively uh, in a good position over the last uh, six to eight months obviously it went down but it it didn't go down as badly as even like uh, indexes like s p and qqq and so that's why you see this like line going up from uh, November 2021 onwards all the way to about uh, May 2022. But then we did have a small dip and now we are again, we are again beating the overall market. So this just shows high relative strength. It can also show trends between different pairs of stocks like Tesla and Ford. And sometimes uh, for the most, I think uh, for the most time in the last five years, Tesla was beating Ford, but there was some time period where, where Ford actually started to beat Tesla as well. So it just gives you really cool comparisons between different uh, stocks that have a fundamental relation with each other. And it lets you find which ones are breaking out, which pairs are working out, which pairs, which stock in a pair is working out better than the other one. So uh, you can uh, do a lot of cool analysis with this. Then we have the intraday volume by price, which is this thing that you're seeing on the left this is volume by price as well you can just look at the one minute and this is what you are seeing here as well but this is just a more uh, easier to visualize a representation of the volume by price we have analyst grades analyst grades we have earnings and then we have seasonality so seasonality is something that a lot of people are interested in and uh, we have divided our seasonality into different time frames we have monthly seasonality which shows how many green candles uh, historically has been there in this month for this stock. We have hourly and we have weekly seasonality as well. But this is a very macro view of seasonality. We have a very granular view as well, which shows you the average price change at different times of the year, at different times of the day, and actually at different times of the week as well. And you can uh, go to the minute level seasonality, or you can go to the hour level. So this is actually showing you so 104 it's the weekday and the hour so this is actually showing you how has this stock been moving intraday uh, during the entire week and this could be very useful because this this can give you an idea on which days is has the stock been going up and which days has the stock been going down obviously historical returns are not predictive of future returns but it still gives you a very good idea on how the market has been moving historically over the last couple of months then we have a different financial matrix uh, and then we have different future financial estimates as well the last thing that's interesting here is the short interest so this is the short sales volume that we get from finra and one thing that most people don't recognize with short interest or short sales volume uh, is that this is not always actual bearish position so if you're seeing high short interest or high short sales volume here this is not the short interest that you, you see with GME or AMC. This is based on slightly different data that comes from FINRA, which is based on shorted shares or shorted sort of uh, volume today. And what happens sometimes is uh, the more short, uh, short volume there is, uh, the higher the price can actually go. So sometimes there is an inverse relationship. Uh, if you do want to analyze that relationship a little bit more, I'd highly recommend skipping this chart and actually going to the dark, dark hole dashboard. We have a widget that looks at the short sales volume, dark pool data within a single chart and it, it actually lets you know the correlation or how does the price actually move with more short volume, more dark pool data. 
things like that so i'd actually skip this chart but if you see like huge spikes that doesn't always mean that the price is going to go up or down you need to have uh, some historical data you need to look at that to identify whether huge spikes in this particular stock cause the price to go up or down so let's actually uh, do one example here so we had a spike in may let's see what the price did in may So this is around right this is where the dark pool spike came in and you can see that that probably was sign of a bottom as well if those uh, sort of short volume if that short volume was short term or if look if we are assuming that those were very bearish position and they were short term then they were probably anticipating this drop but if not uh, then we did have a huge rally right uh, the next month so again the, this doesn't always indicate that we are just going to go down badly sometimes this is an indication that price might actually go up so just do some uh, analysis before actually uh, going before actually making plays based on this chart and then we have the, the correlated the uncorrelated or the least correlated and then the co-integrated stocks i'll completely skip the co-integrated ones because we'll talk about uh, the jin jang tool uh, that we have here and then we'll talk about co-integration and things like that but right now uh, the way uh, you use correlated correlated simply means the stocks that move together uh, with the stock that we are analyzing which is apple here so xlk is obviously the sector etf for technology which is why it moves together with apple because apple is a big chunk of that etf and then obviously you are seeing qqq and tqq uh, but this gives you one really good way that people use this is to find sympathy plays where let's say we have earnings and a stock moves up 20% then what we can do is we can look at stocks that have the same or that have high correlation not same that have high correlation uh, with the stock that is moving very uh, that is moving very well or that is moving very high and then we can actually instead of looking at the stock that has moved too much already we can actually make a sympathy play by looking at the stock that has a high correlation but hasn't moved much so this is how i've seen some people use it and that does make a lot of sense then we have insider trades if you just click on this this will actually take you uh, into the actual insider trade form uh, that's out there and then we have some latest news as well so this was a relatively uh, simple uh, dashboard uh, that talks about different metrics different stats different things that you can find in the price action and you can uh, also do uh, a little bit of technical analysis with these charts I hope this is useful because I use our own charting quite a lot. I, <laughs> I don't spend all my time charting on other platforms because most of the stuff that you need, uh, as long as you're keeping things simple, you can find it uh, on our platform. And I really love these algorithmic levels and these dark pool levels that we have because those uh, those are obviously like right on the money and they work quite well. And uh, we like most of our members use them very regularly. So I hope this uh, helps you. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I'll see you guys around. Thank you.